It is a beautiful day in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York City, and today we're going to visit some exhibits that have just opened during Armory Week. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, just hit that notification bell and you'll get an update every time I put up a new video. We're going to start the day with this exhibit by Dan Colin at Gagosian Gallery. And this is actually one of three Gagosian shows that we're going to see at various locations in Chelsea. So the exhibit's divided into two parts, the Mother series and the Woodworking series. So the room that we're in right now is featuring works from the Mother series that Colin started in 2009. And the works are based on scenes from the Disney classic Lady and the Tramp. So if you thought these works looked a little familiar, that's why. And each of these works are supposed to reflect a concern with the places that shape our lives. And each painting features different places that could potentially manifest as home to the viewer. In all of these works, Colin really uses that aesthetic that you see in Disney animation to explore the quote, ideas of tradition, influence, and the always fraught American dream. And it's really through these Disney-inspired creations that Colin dives into our collective need for a secure existence. There's nothing that feels more safe and just pleasing in this little dream world than a Disney movie. And he's calling, kind of calling that safeness out, but also calling out the reality that a lot of us may never attain that safety in real life. Colin states that, quote, home can be a dream for some and a nightmare for others. It is the past we come from and the future we aspire to, but inevitably it's where we are, the earth we stand, work, and rest on in the present. This room is the second part of the exhibit and it features works from his woodworking series. And all of these were inspired by Disney's Pinocchio. So this has a direct reference to Colin's family, particularly his father, who was a self-taught wood carver. And he also created these little wooden sculptures that you'll see sitting next to some of the paintings. We're now going to head over to another Gagosian location on 24th Street to see an exhibit of three works by Urs Fischer. So Fischer is a Swiss artist who's known for creating a really wide range of works. So everything from sculpture and installations and photography. And the past few shows I've seen of his at Gagosian have really utilized technology in particular. And this one is no exception. The work that we're looking at here is titled Chaos 501, and it features every digital sculpture that he's ever created as a part of his Chaos series. And it's on actually a 14 by 30 foot 8K wall display. I've never seen an 8K display this large, so that in itself is a pretty spectacular spectacle. But each object in the series is based on an everyday object and the details and all the imperfections found in the physical world are intentionally preserved in each of these works. And they're created by various scanning processes that can kind of pick up on all of this. And by putting all 500 of these digital sculptures together into one work, Fisher's forming a quote, subjective encyclopedic composition that tells the story of humanity through artifacts it leaves behind.
you can see everything that's powering that screen back here. I really like it when they kind of show off the tech behind it, literally, <laughs> but maybe that's just me. I think this stuff is pretty cool. So in the next room, the gallery has actually built an entirely new structure to house this work. And the work is titled People, and it is a full-scale recontextualization of room 43 in the National Gallery. And it's overlaid with a 360-degree projection of heads sourced from online videos. And this work is really meant to shift the power away from the institution more traditional entity and on to the everyday viewer like you and I. And the projected heads are rep meant to represent, quote, thousands of people in the act of sharing their opinions with remote audiences. I'm not gonna lie, this work can make you a little dizzy <laughs> looking at it, I know it certainly did me, but this is the final work in the exhibit and this one's titled Denominator, which also happens to be the title of the entire show. And this is a 12 foot cube constructed from LED screens that display a sequence of fragments from international television commercials. So AI algorithms deconstruct the commercials into these individual shots and they're then grouped by theme or color and displayed in this layered pattern and choreographed sequence. It's really special. I also love this moment when the woman in the corner is on her phone and all of the phones start <laughs> displaying on the screen. It's a very kind of meta experience. We're now going to head over to Kasman Gallery to see an exhibit by Vanessa German titled Sad Rapper. And if you've ever had the chance to hear Vanessa speak, whether it's about her works or reciting her poetry, she's one of the most like mesmerizing individuals and one of the most really genuine artists through and through. This is her first exhibit with Kasman Gallery since they announced her representation and it features a series of sculptures that quote, confront urgent social and political themes of racial oppression, structural violence, commemoration, and community. 
And the sculptures are meant to be kind of like a group portrait, and they were inspired by German's youth in Los Angeles in the 1980s. Vanessa, as you can see, has a very distinctive style that is rooted in indigenous and West African folk practices, as well as black arts movements from the 1960s and onwards. And the way that she assembles objects is just so masterful. And the title of the exhibit, as well as the, one of the main sculptures that you see in the entrance, Sad Rapper, hints at some of her more recent explorations into black masculinity particularly the expectations of masculinity within society. And she, quote, asks us to confront how our world has been damaged by its patriarchal structures. And the gallery states that, quote, this presentation is offered by German as a redemptive space in which visitors are invited to identify, experience, and really begin to address the rage and the grief engendered by both historic and ongoing racial violence in our society, to which the artist's humanistic vision responds forcefully and compassionately. We're now going to Hauser and Worth to see an exhibit by Jenny Holzer titled Demented Words. And the exhibit features works inspired by American politics over the past few years. So hopefully this isn't too traumatizing for you. <laughs> this room features paintings on linen that speak to ongoing issues in American politics, all the way from the era of George W. Bush to the present. And so she's created heavily redacted government documents, including special counsel Robert Mueller's report on the Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, as well as FBI records pertaining to the Patriot Act. And she's used these metallic paints to make the documents not only more challenging to read, but more beautiful. And this is done to kind of remind the viewers that the quote, world around us contains truths and secrets that are suppressed yet eminently present. And what you see here is a giant kinetic sculpture titled WTF. And so the sculpture actually swings back and forth in the space at various speeds and paces and it features tweets by Donald Trump during his presidency as well as posts by Q the leader of the QAnon conspiracy We're now going to head to our final exhibit of the day, which is at Gagosian's third Chelsea space. And this is a show by Rick Lowe titled Meditations on Social Sculpture. And the works in this exhibit were inspired by two key things, Lowe's community-based art programs, as well as his interactions with these community members, and in particular, playing dominoes. He's played dominoes apparently all over the world and he takes overhead photos of the game and reproduces a lot of these patterns in his paintings. So he's really melding two in pieces of inspiration here, his worldly domino games as well as these grid-like systems that are inspired by city planning.
that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all in my next videos where I'll be exploring the Upper East Side as well as attending some really great artist talks. So stay tuned for that.